This is the part that I don't like talking about or that people don't like hearing about, but it is the absolute truth. And that is that the reality of life is that not everyone wants to do this work and not everyone is. And, and actually, most people don't want to. So when you're going through this process and you've made these decisions, go into it with the expectation that on the other side, you may not be with the same people that you were before. Because the, the reality is, is that the people that loved the unhealed version of you, oh, this is so good. The people that love the unhealed version of you, will not be able to love the healed version of you. Why? Because they were your triggers to ignite your healing, which means they're trauma bonds of sort and B, your unhealed state fed their unhealed state. Oh, your unhealed state fed their unhealed state. They were getting fed from that. What happens? <laughs> Sorry, this is so good. What happens when you become healed? And then they try to eat off of you. That sounds really bad. But what happens when you become healed and they try to feed off of you? They can't. They'll starve. Either they'll starve and they'll move themselves away. Oh my gosh. Or you will bring yourself back down to that state so that they can get fed and everyone's happy or not. Welcome to Ignite the Spark Within, a podcast designed to do just that ignite your spark within you. I'm your host, Sarah Malone, owner of Spark Fitness and Lifestyle Coaching and voted Yahoo Finance's top 10 female coaches to follow in 2021. I believe everyone has a fire inside them, a powerful purpose, a story waiting to be told, and everyone can uncover and unleash this power. Every day you have the choice to either let your experiences shape you or take control and use your experiences to shape the world around you. You were made to experience happiness, freedom, joy, purpose, love, passion, and abundance. Disrupt the status quo, think for yourself, and join forces with those around you doing the same. Join me for thought-provoking conversations along with the strategies needed in order to help you ignite your spark within. Well, welcome back to the show. I am so excited for today's episode. It has been a long time coming, this episode on the healing journey. We've been talking a lot about it via social media, and just it seems to be on the forefront of everyone's minds and hearts right now as collectively, really, we are in a place where we need healing. And so before I even begin this episode, I just want to ask you guys, if this episode or any of my episodes or this show in general brings you any value at all, please, 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 the biggest compliment you can give is to hit that share button, rate the show on Spotify specifically and Apple as well. This helps to get this feed out to more people who need this information. Um, and it just helps to generate the buzz and, uh, and to share that. So if that's one thing I could ask you guys to do, that would be it. So please share. Um, Today's episode has been ignited by not only what's happening in the state of the world, but um, in turn, that leads to a lot of individual healing and individuals who are, you know, at a really important time right now. The, the healing journey begins when we are on our knees. And that is a humbling experience because when we are humbled enough to get knocked down, um, it's there that we realize 
where to look. And the only place to look is up. And so until we have the opportunity to be on our knees, which is a painful place to be, um, we don't have the opportunity to really relinquish our own idea and control of our life. And therefore, we will cycle and circulate in patterns uh, that are unhealthy out of mere programming. And so I'd like to begin this episode with a quote that I use a lot at my retreats. And it goes like this. You are who you are because of what has happened to you, not in spite of what has happened to you. And a better way to phrase that would be, you are not who you are in spite of what you've been through, but you are who you are because of what you've been through. Now, there's an important distinguishing factor here as to say that, you know, we are not um, destined to um, trauma or traumatic beliefs or traumatic trends or traumatic habits, um, but they do pose an opportunity to find our purpose within that. And so what the healing journey really is, is it's a journey of growth. All of us experience trauma of many various forms and various depths. Not one single human being on the face of this planet Earth can escape the reality that trauma happens. And trauma can simply be identified as anything that happens to you that you do not have the tools or the capabilities to handle at the time of it happening. So it could be very simple. It could be, you know... You're in the car when you're a young child throwing a temper tantrum and your mom decides to get out and is like, okay, well, you know, um, if you don't want to get out, I'm just going to go inside and leave you in there. And in that moment, you are so scared. You think that you're going to be left in the car alone. That's a trauma. So we don't have to nitpick ourselves and say, you know, what I've been through isn't that bad. It's all respective, right? It's, it's all perspective. So, And so if that is the case, we can take our ego out of it and say, what I've been through isn't that bad. You know, I don't have healing to do. We all have healing to do. Every single human being has healing to do. This is something that we cannot avoid, nor can we deny Additionally, if the healing journey is really a growth journey and growth equals happiness, then all of us have a responsibility, if we truly want happiness, that is, to pursue this said healing journey or growth journey. Okay? So no one is is exempt. I want to begin this by making it very clear. No one is exempt from needing healing or aka growing. Okay? And in this episode, we will go over many different things as it pertains to the healing journey, one of which is some misconceptions as it, as it pertains to the healing journey. Uh, another one is what it really is at its core um, and how we can attack this and uh, approach this and do this in our own time. Um, some tips and tools, the different stages of the healing journey. Um, and then what to expect on the other side. Also, we'll go over some to-dos and what not to do's as it comes to the healing journey. And, and we'll talk about how this is not a starting and stopping point. This is a continuous journey. We'll also go over some important questions to begin asking yourself, not only while you're going through the healing journey, but then uh, as you're kind of going through your next level, right? So let's dive in by beginning to define this healing journey and understanding that the very term healing journey reflects that this is not a point A to point B. This is a continual process that you will go through until you die. Okay, this is never ending. It is, it is not stopping. In fact, if we stop the pursuit of healing or growing, our spirits die. 
And I know that we can look around us at this time in history and see many people who are kind of walking dead. You know, I joke, I joke about this and say, say we're already living in the zombie apocalypse because we have many people who are walking around dead inside. And so there's no stopping point. That is the first That is the first step I would say in getting peace in this pursuit is when it's, it's, it's a, (laughs) it's kind of depressing and it's also very, um, very uplifting at the same time. It lifts a weight off of our shoulders to say, okay, I'm in this for the long haul. Like I don't have to be racing. That's not a race because there's nowhere to go. (laughs) There's nowhere to be. There's nowhere to say I'm here. I'm healed. I'm complete, you know? So this takes away the need, which we all have as human beings to, to rush this process. We cannot rush this process. As a matter of fact, the more we try to rush it and put our own ideas of how fast or where we should be, how much progress we should, we should have made by now, A, it's delusional and it's an illusion because it's not real. There's no way to say, you are at this point of the healing process because it's a continuum. So we must commit to this. And we must also realize that the ego would want to tell you and define you are here. Here's where you are. And you're either doing good or bad in this process. There really is no, there's no grading system There's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong way. The only way to to say if you're not on the right path is if you stop. So a couple other misconceptions that someone does the healing for you. Nobody, even healers, are the ones healing you, right? There's no way to hand over the controls to someone else. You can ask for assistance, and that's what I do, and that's what other healers do. Um, They guide, they assist, they help to shed light on things that maybe you can't see. That's the whole point of having, having a shadow side. That's the whole point of having an ego, because it blocks us from seeing the truth. And that's what healers do is they expose you to the truth. At least they should be. (laughs) And the truth is very hard, but the truth will set you free. And in freedom is found your healing. So everyone is here to help you. As a matter of fact, when we can open our lens and look at everyone as helpers and healers, even your enemies, because they are, Even your enemies are your biggest teachers, and they will expose you to the parts of yourself that you don't want to look at the most. So our enemies are the people that cause us trouble or trip us up or even cause us suffering. There are greatest gifts, greatest gifts, especially as it pertains to the healing journey. They will expose our triggers. They will expose our wounds. They will expose our weaknesses. And if you can be strong enough to sit in that and and ask and also be self-aware and, and and reflect on what's really going on here, you will have this deep sense of gratitude for everyone you encounter, even the people you don't necessarily like. Now, that's not to say that you spend more time around them because they're helping you learn about yourselves. We're not masochists here. <laughs> and we're also... Um, not cruel to say, I'm only spending time with you because your resistance is helping me to grow. That's also not fair to the other person because that's not true love. Okay. But we can still be grateful for the challenges that they present to us and the fact that their difficulty, or at least our difficulty in being able to handle them with peace and with love is a signal, it is a, um, an arrow as to where we need to focus. And that's all we really need to start, okay? But it goes much deeper. So let's, let's dive into now 
this part about what it is we're really doing. So when we talk about the healing journey, it can be very overwhelming. A lot of people come into my office and they say they will list off all the things that have happened to them. And, <laughs> and they're like, well, how do I heal from this? Okay. Let's be very clear. Um, the healing journey and then the individual experiences are kind of two separate things. We can't just list a bunch of trauma that has happened to you and then say like, well, which one do I start to heal first? Or where do I start to heal there? Well, first of all, we have to picture this as one big giant picture. Normally, normally there is one core experience from childhood that shifted or affected you in such a way that you changed. You changed away from the core soul. And I refer to this as self with a capital S. And you formed a belief. This is where the healing work can be done. This is very important to get, guys. This is very important to get. This belief then causes you to act a certain way. And our beliefs are like magnets. And they will pull us towards other people or experiences or, or at the very least, we will look outside at the world around us to attempt to verify our belief. Okay, so this one core experience rocked you. You formed a belief, rightfully so, to protect yourself. But you didn't stop to test this belief or disprove this belief. So you kept it, you go on through life, and now you're attracting all these similar experiences. Maybe they're different, but underlying they're communicating the same thing to you. And that that's, and that is that that belief is true. So all those 25 other experiences that happened in your life, while it's important to address them, They weren't really the core experience that set all of this in motion. So when we talk about addressing the symptoms versus addressing the root cause, this is an important thing to realize in the healing journey. So it's like, where do I start? So they ask, where do I start? And I say, at the core experience. Well, how do I get there? One battle at a time. (laughs) One battle at a time. This is a war. Okay, (laughs) we have to be very real, right? In this um, age of enlightenment and spiritual awakening, I think it can be easy to be to to have a misconception of enlightenment and high spiritual vibration with like just being peace and love and failing to recognize that with peace and with love is war. It's a war. It's a beautiful war. And if we can keep our focus on the war that we're really fighting, which is let's identify what that war is. So we talk about the healing journey is like a war. What what is that war? That war is your own personal salvation, your own personal freedom, your own personal self with a capital S back to that. Okay. There is a real war happening. And that the one side is trying to take you away from self. The, The further you get away from self, the closer you get to darkness. And if you're there currently, know that there still is light possible, but this is the war you're fighting. And it's important. So so here's how we tackle the healing journey. If it's a war, war consists of multiple battles. How are wars won? One battle at a time. Now, these battles will look different for each person, depending on what their healing journey looks like, depending on their surroundings, depending on their level of readiness. 
Okay. But if you're going to say, I'm committing to this healing journey, then this requires a level of vision. You must have vision. You must see that there is a much bigger picture. And that is the ultimately the main war that you're fighting. It takes vision. It also takes presence. Because it requires you to determine what is most important as it pertains to the whole war, not just the moment right now. But on the flip side of that, it also requires you to be present to know that if I don't win this battle today, I don't win the war. If I don't win this battle today, I don't win the war. So there's two types of people that this can trip up. A, the person that's like totally focused on the war and is like, oh, I got to heal. I got to heal. I got to heal. I got to heal. And they're missing the very moment that's calling to them right now, which is this chaotic franticness. If you just stop for a second and you can say, oh my God, my battle today is to stop focusing on getting the war won. What is it about me? That has caused me to need like this outcome mentality and this race, this finish, like what, where is all of this rushy coming from? There's your battle right there. Focus on that. You'll get a lot of discovery in that. Usually the source of that frantic mentality is a chaotic home, uncertain home in which a child felt that there was no, um, ground beneath them, that they couldn't rely on anything, right? And they're just frantic. They're just running. Okay. Each battle is going to be reflective of a different season. And it's going to be asking you to focus on one thing. And it's important that you focus on that one thing and not all the things. You can't say, well, I have abandonment and I have anxiety. I have control issue and I'm overthinking. It's like, where do you go with that? Let's focus on the abandonment. Are you fearing that, that you're going to lose all of your important relationships and therefore you, re you recognize that you've been codependent and you've been uh, cycling in toxic relationships, not able to get out because you fear of what that would look like to be alone? And let's focus there. And then within these battles are little encounters, right? If you think about an actual battle, you're having encounters with different people of the opposing team, and you've got to win that too. So, okay. So I know I have this abandonment issue. That's my battle. Okay. I'm going to focus on my abandonment issue. That's my battle. And so now each interaction is going to be a test for you. Am I responding out of codependency, which would only feed my abandonment issue, <laughs> right? Or am I responding out of love or am I choosing me? Okay. Win that and you go on to your next opponent. Each opponent is going to bring out either... <laughs> This is so good, you guys. This is so good. Hear this. Each opponent, how you respond to each opponent is going to lead you one of two ways. Either towards your traumas or towards your healing. There's only two ways. There's only two ways. You can't stay the same. You, you cannot stay the same. We are always changing. You're either going right or you're going left. There's no other option. So as soon as you know that your focus, that your battle is supposed to be the abandonment issue, and that's causing you a lot of pain, a lot of stress, a lot of unhealthy cycles, <laughs> then you have an opportunity that each opponent there is either triggering your traumas or you're choosing you and you're going towards your healing.
When you win the battle, you get closer to claiming the war. So this is so important to get before we even move on to the how-to, right? Because we have to understand this bigger picture here that it can be easy to be overwhelmed. It's an overwhelming journey because you think in your head you've got all of these experiences to heal from. In order to remove this, this sense, excuse me, this sense of overwhelm, we must understand that our battles will be presented to us as we need them, as it pertains to winning the war. If we try to skip steps, we will only go backwards. And if we try to win too many battles at once, we will lose the war. And what that loss looks like is, well, what that loss looks like really is resorting back to your old behaviors and and giving up on the progress that you've already made or that you were going to continue to make. So to recap that portion, the healing journey is a war. The war is on your soul. Win each battle. In order to win the war, keep your vision on what is most important in order to win the war, and then look at each opponent experience as the strength of the the strength of the win of that battle. Okay. Did you win it by a hair or did you win it by a landslide? And that will also determine your your speed, in quotes marks, speed of healing through. If you're just out there slaying and you're like, nope, I choose me. Boom, boom, boom. I made the decision. You just annihilated. Or did you just barely get by? Okay, this is a cool analogy, but think about it as it pertains to your healing journey. Okay, so how do we know what to heal, right? How do we know what to heal? Well, We talk about triggers, right? We begin by recognizing our triggers. What is a trigger? A trigger is something that evokes a response out of you that seems disproportional to what is really happening because it is connected to a wound. I'm going to repeat that. What is a trigger? This is so good. What is a trigger? Something that evokes a response out of you that seems disproportional to what is really happening because it is connected to a wound. And if it triggers you, it is still a wound. So a lot of coaches out there talk about, um, you know, uh, your triggers and it's like, but how do I know what a trigger is? Because sometimes things happen then we find our mood shifted or we find that we just lashed out and we just continue going on about our day, not addressing the fact that we just got triggered. So for example, some people think triggers are just, you know, a breakup, something major, something major would be like a breakup. Oh my gosh, that triggered my fear of abandonment. But triggers are happening all the time. And if we can become self-aware, so the, per- the important part about this is becoming aware, um, become aware of your responses. Do you lash out? Do you go into an internal spiral? Um, discover where that change happened and then backtrack it and acknowledge what that trigger was. I'll give you an example. Okay, I told someone that I was going to be late for a session. All of a sudden, they got very depressed and they couldn't figure out why their mood shifted. And then it was like, we backtracked it. We backtracked it all the way to that moment when I said I was going to be late. And the, this, this is how simple it can be, guys. It simply was a matter of that they didn't feel important. They didn't feel like a priority. There you go. That's your direction. 
Where is that coming from? Why don't you feel like a priority? Why does that bother you? Somebody late for you and your child, you know what I mean? This is going to point you in the direction where you need to focus. Now, again, we're not looking at everything at once, but like if you notice that something is continually disturbing you, changing your state, changing your mood, then A, recognize that that is the area that you are being called to focus on because if it triggers you, it's still a wound. But also that you have an opportunity then to say, and I'll provide another example in a moment, to say, man, after you do this assessment and you realize some of the same people are continuing to trigger you like just by their presence or they continue to say the same things that trigger a response out of you that you don't like, then this is also an opportunity to address and assess who you are surrounded by. Address and assess. I should say assess and then address because you're going to assess this first who's constantly triggering me and I'm just getting tired of this. And then you're going to address that by putting distance or by leaving altogether. Okay. Now this could be another trigger in and of itself. Because if you have to part ways with someone, well, it's a hard thing to do. The important part about recognizing your triggers is not so much the recognition in and of itself. It's knowing that now that you have an awareness of that, you have your power back immediately. I recently, I recently dealt with an experience that was triggering me. And I realized that this came down to a, for me, a deep fear of judgment uh, during times of change. And so it was, you know, recognizing where that came from. I can tell you exactly where it came from. It came from my childhood with my mom. And that does, that does less good than how I'm going to address that wound now. Okay. It's cool. And it's nice to say, oh my gosh, I know exactly where that came from, but how does that help you now? It's great to know where it came from, but it's more important to know what are you going to do about it now? Okay, so all this really does is it shows you a part of yourself. Outside of self, capital S, we have so many parts of us. And they all need our attention, sure. (laughs) But it's so important that we only focus on one at a time. One at a time. Because when they get the proper attention that they need, they can be quelmed and calmed enough for you to be able to focus on another part. Okay, so how do we know how to heal? Triggers. Notice your triggers first and foremost. Becoming aware of these, what they look like, how you respond. Noticing the changes in your responses and then being able to stop, reflect, and backtrack to the time in which your state changed. Understand what happened. Maybe identify where it is originating from. Maybe not. If you desire that help, you know, therapy helps with that. Um, But then go forward with the intent of working on and strengthening this area. 
Okay. You can also be signaled on where and what to focus on in your healing. Uh, it, this could come by one catal catalytic event that causes a chain reaction breakdown, <laughs> enticing healing. And what better way to do that than COVID? That was one catalytic event that, that sent a chain reaction through humanity, really, <laughs> really, um, a breakdown that was uh, that uh, that that caused a lot of people to understand <laughs> that they need healing. So this can be overwhelming, you know. So so we need to we need to remember that um, when you feel overwhelmed, it's because you're looking at too many things at once, or you are just way too intertwined with the feeling and with the part of you that is hurting. Oh, oh, this is so good, guys. This is so good. So let's break this down. When you feel overwhelmed in any part of the healing journey, it's because either you're looking at too many parts at a time or you are so deeply intertwined with the part that is in distress and you can't even separate yourself from it. So this is where it's important to have tools and tactics. Okay. Talking to someone that you trust helps. Being able to break this down into manageable chunks, realistic chunks, which sometimes can be hard because when you're in an emotional state, it's very hard to look at things objectively and realistically. But only with that objective and realistic lens can we see things for what they truly are and, and not worse than what they are. <laughs> and uh, and begin to dispel this. Breathing is one way to tap into this. Breathing, meditation is one way to tap into this because breathing and meditation brings you back into your body when, when there is a anxiety attack or a deep, deep sadness. You know, we're connecting so much with that emotion that we're out of our bodies. We're actually out of our bodies. And so breathing helps to bring us back into our body. Now, these are just, these are just tools and tools and tips. Um, but obviously, therapy is extremely beneficial. Um, I use hypnotherapy because it's the fastest form because you're communicating directly with the subconscious where it stores all of your information that you'll need to know as it pertains to your healing journey and where you need to go right now. It's an extremely effective form of therapy and it happens much quicker. And the best part is you are all in control. So that's important. At the end of the day, when we're in this overwhelmed state, our instinct is going to want to be to push it away, make it stop, right? Make it stop. I shouldn't feel all of this. You should feel all of it. You should feel all of it. And the only reason you're staying stuck is because you refuse to feel all of it. Remember this, in this healing journey, we are not trying to get rid of any parts of you. Okay, your parts of you are what make up you. And they all serve a purpose. What we're doing here in the healing journey, and remember, we're still defining <laughs> at this point, we're still, we're 36 minutes in here. We're still defining just what the healing journey is and how to even start it. We're about to go into the different stages. That will be exciting, but we are not trying to get rid of any parts of you. What we do want to do is come alongside those parts in an effort to reframe and heal them. You're doing the healing. They still belong with you. Just not in the current role that they're playing. And so the goal with healing. This is a beautiful part about healing. This is, this is such a beautiful part. And it's such a misconception in the healing journey. The goal in the healing journey is to integrate all of your parts in a healthy and harmonized way. The goal in the healing journey is to integrate all of your parts in a healthy 
and harmonious way. It's to come into internal harmony with all of your parts. Healing doesn't then look like these things don't ever happen again or you're never triggered again. A good way to know if you're making progress in your healing journey is how quickly you recognize it and then how quickly you make the decision about it. And thirdly, how you stick with that. Example would be in a toxic relationship that was repeating old cycles and patterns, breakup happens, you go through a turmoil, you recognize what it is, you know that the temptation to go back is because of your fear of abandonment, you get the temptation, you say no. You get the temptation again, or they're asking you to go back, and you say no again firmly, you make the stance, and you take the action to cut off that relationship. That is some major progress in the healing journey. So the misconception that you just won't ever deal with these things again, that's not true at all. You will absolutely deal with these things again. The difference between a healed part and a wounded part is that it triggers you. See, triggering, oh, this is so good. <laughs> triggering is different than recognition. Triggering is different, different than recognition. You can recognize, oh, I see what's going on there. <laughs> The previous version of me would have allowed that breakup to crush me because it triggered my, my abandonment issue. Okay, that's an unhealed part. <laughs> the healed part of me is saying, wow, I recognize this kind of sucks. It's sad to say goodbye. It hurts, but it's not causing me to react in a way that's disproportional to what's really happening. I'm responding. I'm having my feelings of sadness. And then I'm moving on. Like I'm, I'm healthily grieving the loss of the relationship. The, and I use the word loss in quotations because <laughs> we never truly have anything, right? Nothing's ours. Um, that would be the difference. Okay, so it's important to know what you're even looking for when you're on this healing journey. Okay, moving on. Here are the different stages that I've assessed and witnessed in the healing journey. I'm going to break each one down, but if you want to write these down, here are 11 stages of the healing process. These are ones that I've discovered. These are ones that I've deemed uh, important as stepping stones. First one's awareness. Okay. There's a certain part of this process. <laughs> this is a, this is a hard part, right? The, the, when you, when you first become aware, when you first become aware of an issue, like when you first become aware, oh my gosh, I have a codependency issue. That's your awareness, right? Stage two is distress. Immediately upon becoming aware of this part of you that is dysfunctional or unhealthy or holding you back. Um, there is an internal feeling of distress because there is temporarily a gap. There's a gap in where you are and where you want to be. And now that you know what it is, you're like, ow, right? It's like, ow, there's a point of distress of like, how do I close this gap? How do I get to the other side? And uh, where do I even start with that, right? And then the third, the third stage is decision slash action. You can write that down, decision slash action. This is the point in the process where you're like, so, so, <laughs> so this is important too. A lot of people will stop at stage two. <laughs> it's a horrible place to be really, because now you're aware <laughs> Now you're aware of the pain and the weakness and the what's going on and you feel distressed about it, but, but 
but you haven't made a clear decision or an action towards healing it. So now you're just stuck in this tension and it's like, I don't know why you'd want to stay there, but a lot of people do. Um, and sometimes it's just easier to go back into your blindness and ignorance. Um, and maybe that's, you know, the, the more, the more enticing reality to be a part of because it's familiar. Um, but for me, that, that is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, for me personally, as soon as I become aware of an issue that I'm cycling or doing consistently, that's holding me back in any way, um, that's holding me back from joy or purpose and passion and love, um, then I'm like already past the distress mode in like an instant. And I'm like, decide, go, let's make a move on this. Because um, now that I know you have the power to do something about it. Okay. But most people stop at step two and they stay in that distress. And the, here's the hard part is you think that by turning a blind eye and going back to your old negative and uh, unproductive habits that like the distress will go away, but it doesn't. <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse because your subconscious knows you can't trick your subconscious. As soon as you bring a shadow part out into the light and it's exposed, it, it wants to be healed because here's what's so important to know because it knows who you really are. <laughs> It knows who you really are and it knows you're pure and it knows you're whole and it knows your love and it knows that you're undamaged. So as soon as you become aware of that, your subconscious mind is like, hey, 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 what are we doing about this? We need to be congruent with who our, our true identity is. So like, this is not comfortable and I'm not going to make it comfortable for you because no one moves. <laughs> so good. No one moves when it's comfortable. It takes discomfort to get you to move. And if you're smart, it only takes a little bit of discomfort. But if you're stubborn, it takes a lot of discomfort. And that's why everybody's rock bottom is so different because some people, all they need is a little bit of discomfort and they're like, oh, no, nope, I'm moving. But other people need a lot of discomfort. And this comes in the form of anxiety, pain, fear, sadness, anger. You know, when the discomfort gets great, become when the discomfort becomes greater than the uncertainty of change, that is when you will change. So that distress part, guys, is very important. Because if we didn't have that, would we really move on it? Would we take action? So stage three is to decide and act. Decide and act. When you make an internal decision, I am healing from this. I've become aware of my issue. Now I feel a lot of pain because I know what it is. And you make a decision and you take an action whether it's by reaching out to someone, whether it's by signing yourself up for a retreat, whether it's um, reading a book, something. Stage four, hunger. As you experience some of the new ideas that are correlating with your exact pain point, inside swells up a deep hunger for this growth, for this healing. This is a beautiful spot to be. Because right here is where you're focused on your new empowering alternative rather than the old one. Here is where this hunger will drive you into stage five, which is a release. This is my favorite part. This is my favorite, one of my, <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts. As a therapist, as a coach, as a, uh, this term, healer, um, this is such a beautiful part of the process when you release what has got its hold on you.
The reason this step is so beautiful is because it's a liberation. It is a liberation from pain, from feelings, from situations that you've been holding for years and years and years. And you finally give yourself permission to let it go, to release your grip. It's like, In that instant, you feel a sense of liberation and you open up the space for step six, which is renewal. In order to transform, we can't just take in new things and put them on top of old things. That release has to happen before renewal can happen. You've got to let go of something before you can take hold of something. Mm, That is so good. You've got to let go of something before you can take hold of something. (laughs) God is speaking today. I'm feeling this one. You have got to let go of the old in order to take hold of the new. And I would go so far as to say this is not new. This is who you always were. It's who you've always been. It's just coming back to it. So before we go to the next stages, I want to recap. Awareness is number one. Becoming aware of what is it? What needs healing? What's the weakness? What's the pain? What's the wound? Distress, because that reality is not comfortable and we need discomfort to move. Most people stop here. You do not. If you're listening to this podcast, you do not. And if you're one of my clients or I've ever served you in Reiki, hypnotherapy, or in fitness, that is not you. Um, Step three is a decide and act. It's an internal decision. You know somebody's made a decision when they take an action. They don't just say it. A decision happens and it's shown from an action, FYI. So if someone says, I've decided I'm going to do this and you don't see any action, they haven't decided. It wasn't a decision. That was just a statement. So hard to hear, but it's truth. (laughs) It was just a statement and it probably made them feel good. And it probably made you feel good in the moment, but it, it wasn't a decision. Okay. That's step three. And then in that action, you develop a hunger. Your hunger grows so big that it leads you into a release because you're gaining all of this, all of this awareness and enlightenment, okay? That release leads to a renewal, a renewal. And now you feel fresh, you feel clean, you feel renewed, you feel liberated, you feel free, you feel love. And that leads to step seven, which is integration. And this is another hard part of the journey. You're ready for this because I'm about to go there. Integration is so hard because in a vacuum, healing is, well, it's quite easy, actually. In a vacuum all by yourself, if you were to go to a healing center and only focus on healing yourself, you could do it. You would do it really well and it wouldn't be that hard. It would be challenging, but it wouldn't be like really hard. But when you... (laughs) When you go to insert yourself back into your day-to-day life with the same people that used to trigger you before, this is where the challenge is real. And this is where integration happens. It's how do I integrate this healed version of myself into my world? How do I do that? And I have to be honest with you, there was a point in my integration that was so 
painful. I felt as if I was on a different planet. I was looking around like, where am I? Who? I don't know how to act around these people. I don't know what to say. I don't know like what the heck is going on, right? Because really you're different and they're expecting you to be how you were before and you don't know how to act around them. You don't know how to share yourself with them in some cases, right? This is an extreme version. This is in all cases. But in all cases, there will be an integration of bringing this healed version of you <laughs> into the same environment, okay? And this this is this is pretty much the longest stage of the journey because it it's like it's going to then balance you out. You go away to a way up to this high at first. You go way up in this high of healing and high vibration and um, uh, this hunger. You know, you have a purpose. You have such a strong purpose of healing and this focus and this vision and. Um, and then you have this renewal process, and then you try to come back into your world. And this could be in a moment, it could be in a season. Um, and when I say in a moment, I mean like you could have an amazing, amazing um, healing experience in the morning in your meditation. And then you're like, oh, now I got to go do my day at my job. You know, so this, this integration part is happening all the time. It's how do I integrate myself with my new healing, with my new standards into the world that I currently live in? There's a lot of decisions to make in this process because you have to decide, um, is it important for me to keep these people um, happy and around? Um, because if that's the case, you may be having to undo some of the healing that you've just done. Or is it important for me to keep my healing? In which case, I recognize that I may be upsetting some people that currently thought that, uh, previously thought that they knew me. Okay. Um, and this, this is like, how much do you share? How much do I share with the people around me? Um, how much do I open up to the people around me? And this is a long part of the process, but this integrating yourself back, it's going to require patience. It's going to require uh, a support system. It's going to require you to trust yourself. And it's going to require you to multiple times go back through those hunger release renewal stages as you are integrating yourself. Inevitably, though, this integration stage will lead to the next stage, which is separation. This is the part that I don't like talking about or that people don't like hearing about, but it is the absolute truth. And that is that <laughs> the reality of life is that not everyone wants to do this work and not everyone is. And, and actually, most people don't want to. So when you're going through this process and you've made these decisions, go into it with the expectation that on the other side, you may not be with the same people that you were before. Because the, the reality is, is that the people that loved the unhealed version of you, oh, this is so good. The people that loved the unhealed version of you, <laughs> will not be able to love the healed version of you. Why? Because they were your triggers to ignite your healing, which means their trauma bonds of sort, and B, your unhealed state fed their unhealed state. Oh, your unhealed state fed.
fed their unhealed state. They were getting fed from that. What happens? <laughs> Sorry, this is so good. What happens when you become healed? And then they try to eat off of you. That sounds really bad. But what happens when you become healed and they try to feed off of you? They can't. They'll starve. Either they'll starve and they'll move themselves away. Oh my gosh. Or you will bring yourself back down to that state so that they can get fed and everyone's happy or not. Oh, this is so important because in this process, you guys, you will realize that the people you connected with in your unhealed state, you connected there because they were, they plugged into the parts of you that were not whole. Okay. Oh my gosh. They plug into the parts of you that are not whole. When you become whole, you don't need them to plug into those parts of you anymore. And if they're not doing their own healing journey, that is going to offend them viciously. Why? Because they won't feel like they have a need anymore. They won't feel like they have a purpose in your life, that they have value. They'll feel like you abandoned them. Check that out. They'll be like, you abandoned me because you went and got healed. <laughs> Shame on you. In which case, you have an assessment to make. Does this person really love me? Do these people really love me? Or did they just love the part, the unhealed version of me because it satisfied the unhealed version of them? And you fit like two puzzle pieces. Well, when you fill up that little puzzle piece and their puzzle piece no longer fits into yours, a separation will happen. So just know at this stage of the journey, you will see yourself separate from people uh, that were once in your life. And unfortunately, you don't get to, get to control this um, to some extent, you know, because um, it's like once you know, you can't unknow, you know, once you, once you start healing and you really have made that decision, like in step three and you start doing this work and you're discovering you can't unknow, you can't unheal. It's just something that is like, you can't go back. Otherwise you feel extreme distress. And so unfortunately you do not have control over who decides that they don't like that version of you. And this is where acceptance comes in. Okay. And this is step nine, acceptance. This is when you've accepted that the only portion of this journey that you have control over is your own decision to heal. And you cannot control who decides to ride that wave with you, how their feelings get hurt by you because you're healing. You cannot control people's reactions or who stays in your life or who goes. And you come to a place of acceptance. This is a beautiful place to be because you can accept that there is a flow in and out of people in your life constantly. And this does not make you bad, doesn't make them bad, doesn't make anybody less or less or more or better or worse. It just means that the fit is no longer there. And that's okay because you've chosen you. Now, once you've accepted, there are two more. So, so I would say that would be the end of the, 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 the healing journey on, um, on a human plane. But I've taken this two steps further to go into more of a spiritual realm of higher consciousness and raising your vibration 
and peace, like peace that surpasses all understanding. And the final two steps that I've developed are called curiosity and enlightenment. So curiosity happens after acceptance. So this is a beautiful, this is a, a more spiritual um, take on it, a more spiritual reflection. And so after acceptance, that's a, that's a good place to be, a beautiful place to be is to accept like, I'm on this healing journey. Not everyone's going to be for it. I realize that I'm going to lose some people along the way. Again, lose with quotations because we never really have ownership over things or people, especially people. Um, but um, accepting that and knowing you know, that the healing journey isn't for them. It's for you. It's for you. Um, but, but then there's a part, a stage... And if you're really on this path, that you go into this stage of curiosity. And this is the place I find myself the most, to be honest with you, is like so curious, not only curious with myself, extremely curious with yourself, you know, um, get to this place where you are so curious, like, oh gosh, what is coming up in me right now? Where did that come from? Oh, you know, and then you can dive into it there, but also curiosity about other people. Like, I, I just find it so interesting when you can get to this place of curiosity. It's, it is a level of consciousness when you can take emotions out of it and be like, someone snaps on you. Right. For instance, um, I just had this happen to me the other day. Um, someone snapped on me for, I was so flabbergasted because I'm like, whoa, like I have barely said any words to you or made any interactions and you just totally popped off. And I was like, wow, that is so interesting. <laughs> this is the place of curiosity that really experienced a lot of peace because you just look at people's reactions as like, wow, that's so interesting. I wonder what's going on there that someone would just react that way. Or like, what is going on there? And, and did anything come up in me? I'm so curious. You develop this sense of childlike curiosity with everything that happens. And, and this can be big or small. I often get curious about the state of the world and like the, the, the news platforms and what they portray. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to be like, I wonder if people actually believe this. You know, this is so curious as to how we've gotten here. Has this been so this this sense of curiosity, the stage of curiosity is ultimately um, allowing you to experience the realities of life, which can bring what we perceive as pain, but it brings peace into it because when you get curious, you a um, you unhook yourself emotionally and B, you find out so much about yourself, about the world, and you connect yourself to source. Ultimately, this leads to step stage 11 that I've deemed as enlightenment. So the, the first one through nine steps were more about the human healing journey. These last two are more uh, spirituality and higher conscious levels. But when you get this level of enlightenment, you can take all of these stages, continuum, and instead of seeing it as from top to bottom or bottom to top, I should say, you see it on an evil, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> an even playing field. It's like a continuum. And all of these are happening simultaneously, all at the same time, at different moments of the time. And you experience this sense of enlightenment and you understand finally what the healing journey is. And that it is this beautiful continuum that is constantly ebbing and flowing. It is going up and down and moving around. And you're in it. You're not just in it. You are it. I love this because when you realize that you are it, it's like everything else disappears. The need to be right, the need to do it fast, 
the need to feel like you're doing it right, the need for someone else to give you validation in your healing journey, which is something I'll go into next before we wrap this up. The need to have control over it, the need to know, the need to have your, you know, say your piece. The need to have closure. All of these stages just kind of blend together like a rainbow. And you realize they're all one. And that, that really helps in this healing journey, guys, because then the human mind wants to stay, okay, I've done step one. Now step two, you know, now step three. And now check off the boxes. But spirit and understanding that at a level of enlightenment helps you to realize that you are on a continuum. You always have been. You always will be. You know what the difference is between you and someone who's not healing? You've decided. You've said yes. All you have to do is say yes. And you know what? The moment you say yes, everything you need to know will be exposed to you at its own time. And relinquishing the need of that time frame to be on your timetable is the greatest feeling of freedom you can give yourself. Because your part is saying yes. You know what God's part is? Showing you what you need to see at that moment. Not a moment sooner, not a moment later. So you're not behind. You're not ahead. You're exactly where you need to be. That is what surrender is. It's saying, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I don't even know where to start. Show me. I say yes. If you point, I go. And when you do that from here, from the heart level, for those of you that aren't watching, I'm pointing to my heart space. When you do that from the heart level, trust that you will get exactly what you need when you need it. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't need to seek it out. It'll be shown to you. If your eyes are open and if you've asked for it, it will be shown to you. And then going back up to the war, focus on that. You say yes. You open yourself. You open your eyes and your heart. And you will be shown exactly, exactly where to start, what to focus on. And then Focus on that opponent to win the battle, to win the war. So to recap really quick, and I knew this would be a longer episode and I'm okay with it. If you guys are still with me, I love you. This will be a chunker. You chunk this up maybe into two episodes, or if you're ballsy, you just, you hammer it out. But um, to recap the 11 stages, well, let's do nine stages of human healing. And then the two of spiritual enlightenment would be step one, awareness. Step two is distress. Step three is decide and act. Step four is the hunger. Step five is a release. Step six is a renewal. Step seven is integration, maybe the longest stage. And might I say, ever continuing, constantly, constantly. Step eight, separation. Step nine, acceptance, beautiful place to be. And if you stop there, great. But then you can go further. Step 10 is curiosity, childlike curiosity. And step 11 is enlightenment, enlightenment. Now, here's what happens a lot in... <laughs> people who are doing the healing journey and uh, and and most of them will become coaches or healers of their own. So ego comes into play here. Okay. So 
this is important to recognize because it's almost like a proceed with caution, you know, it's like, um, I'm going to give you the, the, tr- the common trip ups before they happen, but the ego gets in the way. And the ego says like, you are better than, than other people because you chose to do the healing process and they're, they're choosing not to, this is, this is ego. And I'm not saying that it's egotistical, although it can turn into being egotistical. Um, this is your ego that comes up that says, because I chose to do the healing journey, I'm now better. I'm more like elite. I'm at a higher level than you are because you're just choosing to stay in your wounds. Okay. This is actually more important for your spirit than it is for anyone else's. Because if you get in this level of arrogance, which what we're really trying to do here is, and I I should say, rephrase that, what we're really doing here is we're building confidence. And confidence turns into faith, by the way, I'll get into that in a moment. Um, But but, um, a false sense of confidence would be arrogance. And so this, this ego trap can take you right into arrogance. And arrogance will lead you, arrogance is gonna get you in trouble. Arrogance is going to get you in a lot of trouble and ultimately it will cause you to fall, which will inevitably make you look up again and you can go through this all over again. Or you can save yourself that pain and just uh, keep your ego in check. So the ego says I'm better than so-and-so because I'm healing and they're not. The ego also says though, you know, for instance, if you get into a situation where you realize um, you have a bad break with some people or people trigger you and you're like, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enlightened. I should be able to rise above this. I should be able to thrive wherever I am because I'm healed. That's your ego talking. And it's, it's, it's like, it's like telling you, you shouldn't have to remove yourselves from this situation because you should be better than this. Well, ask yourself, but am I? And also, do you need to be? Like, if it's triggering you, what more do you need to know? Simply remove yourself. That does not mean that you're weak. That does not mean that you're less than. That does not mean that you're not healed. As a matter of fact, that is a firm sign of healing to know yourself so well that you can say, you know what? If I stay here, I'm going to backtrack. If I stay with this person, I'm going to be held back. I don't have anything to prove. Part of this is is that in the healing journey, you don't have anything to prove. You have nothing to prove to anybody. This is your journey. You can simply remove yourself and say, hey, this isn't good for me. Your being around you isn't good for me. I'm not saying you're not good for me, even though that probably is the truth if we're being honest, (laughs) but you don't have to say that Um, because there's deeper, we could go deeper into that, but we will not. It could be as easy as saying, you know, uh, this isn't good for me. Uh, I need a new space and it's for my own well being. Thank you for understanding. That's called a boundary. And boundaries are signs. Boundaries, good, healthy boundaries are great signs of healthy, safe, and healed people. Ego would also say, I'm healed. Now I can heal others. Let's remember that we are not the healer. Okay. It's people's choices. And their own internal power that ultimately, well, it's God's power in, inside of them that heals people. We are not the healer. We are just vessels for help. So be humble and just know that it's okay to say, this is not good for me. It will trigger me and I will resort to old behaviors. So n- part of knowing your triggers is also doing something about it. If you know that calling so-and-so right before work is a trigger, don't call so-and-so right before work. It's pretty simple. 
if you know that cake is a trigger for you, don't put yourself in situations where you have cake in front of you or alcohol. Okay. Well, so what we're really doing here is building confidence, like I said. <laughs> and um, what confidence really is, is faith. Is you having this confidence, yes, in yourself, um, but more so in yourself and your ability to listen and figure it out. But where that comes from is your faith in God. You have this level of confidence knowing like, yeah, God is out there working on my behalf. He's going to show me everything I need. And I'm so confident in that because I know that when he shows me, I do it and everything always works out. They go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. It's people with low, low confidence. They, 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 they. They hear the call and then they don't respond. This is so diminishing to your confidence because what it's communicating to you is that I don't listen when I'm being instructed. I can't trust myself. <laughs> I can't trust myself to listen when I hear God's voice or when I hear my gut feeling, or when I feel things, and I don't trust myself. That's where lack of confidence comes from. Ironically, this can show up as arrogance. And arrogance is a false confidence. And it shows up with that macho attitude, pretending that you know we are better or we've got it all together. And it's a persona that we like to appear as. This is a false level of confidence, right? Because it kind of makes you feel good when you're posturing up and, and doing all the things and you're showboating. Um, but deep down, your soul, again, your soul and your subconscious knows the difference. So it's extremely harmful. It's extremely harmful, not only to people around you, but to yourself. True confidence is like this, this humble place to be where you say, yo, I do not know. All I know is that God always shows up for me. He tells me what to do. And I, I am bold enough to listen. And I'm proud of myself for being bold enough to listen. Yo, because not everyone is. God is speaking to us all. Who's listening? And here's the cool part about this. Every time you listen and you're directed in the, in the right way, A, it builds your confidence, simultaneously building your faith. What that does is it opens up the communication to be stronger. <laughs> so you hear it more. You're spoken to more. Everything's exponential from that point. It's an exponential increase in all things. Gifts, spiritual access, healing, higher consciousness, relationships, abundance. Okay. This humility also comes, brings me to a point to remind you that, that there's a fine line in not needing to be fully healed in order to help others heal, but being cautious that we do not attempt to help others heal in a broken state. Okay, there's a difference between like, well, listen, we're all broken people. We will all always be broken people until Jesus comes to save the day. Okay, that's the truth. Um, but so, 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 so you can't just say, um, well, when I'm healed, I can help people. Well, you never will be. So remember that you have a responsibility and ability to help others, um, be before that, 
but prematurely is, is very dangerous too. For instance, um, I was working with, I almost partnered with a woman to do a retreat here in Illinois. Now, um, we had, we had known each other and when it got down to the planning, you know, I began realizing a lot of things. First of all, I realized that this was an extremely broken person and, um, and not in a negative way, just in, in that, in that season of life, there's a lot of breaking happening. There's a lot of grieving happening. There was a lot of sadness. There was a lot of, um, of, 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 well, there was a lot of separation happening and we weren't through those stages yet of, of healing and higher consciousness. And so, you know, um, here we have someone who's trying to lead a, a retreat to help people heal. And meanwhile, um, in the thick of an extreme traumatic healing season, that's not to say that this person isn't equipped. That's just to say, this is not the right time not in the space of that. So the retreat never happened from, for divine protection, but you do have to be at a certain point to be able to help others. Um, if I start going through a trauma, if I lose a loved one, or if, 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 if I'm going through a divorce or something, and then I'm trying to help people do some deep healing while I'm doing some deep healing, it's probably not wise. I might need to take a break. I may need to get through the thick of this before I can help other people heal and see clearly. Okay. So just remember that A, you don't need anyone's permission to say you're ready to help other people. That's between you and God. You'll never be fully healed. So don't, don't wait for that to start helping people, but don't, don't try to jump into the deep end while you're still putting your floaties on in the deep end. <laughs> don't try to dump, jump into the deep end with other people when you don't know how to swim. You've gotten in the pool. That's great. You can just go right to the deep end. Okay. So let's talk about two things before we wrap this up. I know this is a long episode. What is true confidence? True confidence in this journey is that rem remembering that you have nothing to prove. Remembering that you have nothing to prove. If you make a decision that is aligned with your healing, you don't have to explain yourself. You do not have to prove yourself. You don't have to say certain things. You don't have to say all the things. You have to say what's on your heart. And then you have to remove your own expectation of how that person or those people are going to receive what you have to say, which is your individual truth. Your individual truth is your individual truth. Nobody can argue with that. Okay, allow other people to think what they will in their own judgments and be okay knowing what is really happening without the need to prove yourself or without the need to explain. Other people are going to judge how they judge. Allow them to. You also have no need to explain what's happening with you. You don't need to sit down and have a heart to heart with every person in your life and say, Hey, listen, I'm just doing this healing journey. Here's how it's going. Here's how, you know, part of that is relinquishing control to let everybody know, because the only reason you'd be doing that is because you fear their abandonment. When you really have faith, when you really have that confidence, that true confidence, you will go into it and you'll say, you know what? I don't have to force everyone to like understand what I'm going through because again, the only need, the only reason you would need to do that is because you fear them leaving along the way and not understanding you, but truthfully, true love doesn't need to know all of that. And to be honest with you, true love from someone would allow them to step back and see, Hey, they're really pushing themselves to grow right now. I'm going to stand by. I'm going to hold this space. I'm going to be there on the other side when they're ready to talk about it. And if they don't want to, that's fine too. That's what true love would do. You do not need to explain this entire process to everyone in your life. That's part of having the trust that on the other side, those people that are meant for you in your healed state will be there. And those that are not, will not. 
Okay. So let's wrap this up here. Um, some important things you need to know to help you on your healing journey. So, so far we've just, we've, uh, you know, assessed what is the healing journey, how to start, where to, where to be directed. We've discussed the 11 stages. We've ex ex discussed what our true goal is with this whole journey, but here are some, just some bullet points that I've come up with as far as important things to know, um, to help you on your healing journey. Number one, you will need help. That is a fact. That is a fact. That's the whole point of human connection, guys, is that we are all here for each other. We are made for connection. In fact, to say I don't need anyone is an unhealed part that you can check into and that you should check into. Say, I don't need anybody. I could do it myself. Hey, maybe you can. If you're Jesus. <laughs> Okay, we need people. Reach out for help. This is this is the 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 step about decide and act. Like you see who's really serious about their healing when they reach out, when they put their ego down and they're like, "Hey, yo, I need help." And you're like, "Hell yeah. Let's go. Let's do it cuz you really mean it." Cuz you're humble enough to do it. Okay, find your tribe. Because on the other side of the separation, you know, you're going to have to say goodbye to some people. So developing your tribe of like-minded people who are on this path, who are willing to go into the trenches of themselves uh, with you, so, so important. Get your community, find your tribe. And, 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 and when you're finding your tribe, don't try to find it. This is the hard part. Just start being that person follow your intuition and reach out, plug into the places that you feel called to. And let me tell you what, your tribe will find you. Another thing you need to know, recognize that this is a daily and constant pursuit. You, you, you've got to put this on every day, guys. It's a posture that you take. Being on this healing journey, it's like a posture that you must take to say like, I'm showing up for myself today. That is who I am. That is what I, that's like putting on your shoes. You put on self and you choose to pursue this every single day because the moment you don't is the moment a trigger will come right into your vulnerability and knock you off course. But you know what? Give yourself grace. Give yourself grace when you have these setbacks, these setbacks with quotation marks. This is all part of the process. Like, like, like these are individual battles, right? So what you may feel as a setback may just be a battle. Let's reframe it. It's not a setback. It's a set up for your come up. It's a set up for your war win, for your victory. Look at it that way. And even if you were like, dang it, I responded the same way that I used to learn from it, learn from it and give yourself grace. Say, so, you know what? Well, 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 I was like so tired today. I'm running thin and I responded like the old me. I don't like old me a bit. I responded like, you know, old habits. So, okay. So don't run yourself thin. There's the lesson. I need to be mindful of my energy. Wow, wow, wow. It's so easy to slip back into those old habits. Eye opener. Thanks for the lesson. And give others grace too when they can't understand you. Because remember, they knew the, they knew the unhealed version of you. And now you're trying to present this like healed version. And they're like, excuse me, who is this? And I don't know, do I even like you? <laughs> That's fair. It's a fair question for them to have. Let them make their assessments and give them grace because you know what? Some people, they just won't understand it because they're not doing it and that's fine. So give them grace. Understand that they're just at their own point in time. Be firm, but be loving in your explanation of why you're making the decisions that you're making or why you're putting up distance. 
Okay. And then continually check in with yourself. This goes back to the daily pursuit, but check in with yourself. Where are you at? What do you need? Where am I today? What do I need today? Oof, anger's coming up today. Mm, what do I need? I need some self love today. Okay, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Checking in. Avoid toxic patterns and people that have kept you stuck in the past. This will be reiterated time and time again. Once you know your triggers, you can protect yourself and keep yourself out of harm's way. Okay. Don't focus on too many things at once. Narrow it down. What part needs your attention today? What is the battle I'm fighting today? One part at a time. And set your expectations realistically. You know, um, it's, it's very common that I come across clients and um, people asking for mentorship, which I'll do for free on occasion in some ways, that they're like, they're, they're expecting this rapid progress on issues that they've dealt with for a lifetime. And it's like, well, okay, how fast can I accept, expect results? Well, how long have you been dealing with this issue? And then another question to ask yourself is, how ready are you for change? Because you're here, but like, where's your level of hunger, you know? And, 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 and get realistic with what to expect. And, and don't just think that, uh, that once you start this and you start healing parts that you're like, perfect. That you're like this gem, you know? It takes time. It takes time. Another thing to point out is that it's okay to share what's going on with you. It's okay to share this process. And actually, it's encouraged because by you sharing, it inspires others. But, but be prepared that, that other people might not get it and they may shut you down. And just... Just prevent this from allowing this to shut down your desire for sharing. You know, just 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 have discernment in who you share with. It's very important. This this discernment in who you share with is so important. Because when you share with the wrong people, it that can have the power to shut down your progress. Uh, and and I say that I do not say that lightly. That is real. That is literal. Sharing this process with some people, depending on who it is, can have a lethal effect on your healing journey. This is an important one too, guys. Remember that life continues to go on. So don't get lost in your healing journey. Remember, life is continuing to go on. Life is not all about your healing journey. Life is about so many other things. So while there may be a season in which you must go into hermit mode, remember that that should be a season. And that you are not meant to you know, disassociate and disengage completely from society, from your family, from your friends. Don't get lost in this process. It can be easy to do that. This, this, is, this is for you in order to find yourself. Part of finding yourself is then bringing yourself back out to the world to share that with the world. Otherwise, what's the point? And the last point I'll make is a family is not exempt from the people who may leave you or that you may leave behind. All people are on the list of possibilities of people who may reject your healed state. This includes family. This includes spouses. This includes friends. Okay. It doesn't matter the title. People are people. And depending on their state and their point of their process, 
will dictate their ability to accept the healed state of you or not. It becomes very challenging. This happened to me in family dynamics, so I can relate, but it can be very challenging when it is your own family that rejects that. It's a real thing, but you got to ask yourself, what is the cost? What if I do not pursue this path for myself? A better question would be, what if I do pursue this path for myself? You know, there will always be something to sacrifice. Always. Just ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice? You know, it's like, what's the sacrifice? And do I sacrifice myself in order to live up to the world standards? Or do I sacrifice what comes along with the world standards by choosing me? It's a real question to ask before you go into this. So you have some clear expectations. Remember this, your greatest source of power in your healing journey is you and God. Not another person, not a sacred medicine journey. If you don't have a belief in God, this will make the process very difficult, though possible. Your two best assets are you and God. And your next source of power is a good resource and network to help you. This is so important. It can't just be anyone. So important. Not everyone is on a healing journey, but you're not alone. And if you're listening to this, you have chosen to do what the majority will not. And understanding that is also a part of your healing journey. It's a double-edged sword, this healing pursuit, this pursuit of highest self. You know, healing is what I do. <laughs> it's like literally what I do for a living. <laughs> and so... I say that to say, I'm here. Those who have worked with me and that currently work with me know the type of healing that they receive through the process of mentorship with me. Um, it's my greatest passion and joy. But, you know, teaching you tools in which you can embark on this in your own individual journey is extremely important. Because again, you and God are your greatest source of power. The healing journey is complex. It's also very simple. The healing journey is very hard, but it's also very fulfilling and joyful. And I think the most beautiful part about living the human experience is being able to experience the array of human emotions. And there's nothing quite like healing that will take you through the entire array of human emotions. And to get to experience that is a true gift. It's a true gift. Ultimately, I think healing is important for the world uh, because People who are healing are people who are pursuing more of heaven on earth. And people who are healing are also focused on their purpose, their divine purpose, and ending trends that have caused humanity to become ill and evil and stuck. And that's where we find ourselves today, collectively. It's like if we were to look at our collective world right now and ask what stage of the healing process they're in, I would say distress.
there are a lot of people who are at the hunger stage or, um, you know, my fellow leaders who have risen up at the enlightenment stage. There are some people who are now trying to integrate themselves back into this madness. But collectively, those who are falling are really in this distress state. And it's like, choose. COVID ignited the awareness. Then we found ourselves in distress. And then we had a decision to make. And it's been two years now. Some people still haven't made a decision. And that saddens me because it's so simple. But it also really encourages me because I've seen people rise up and make that decision that I never thought would. And I've seen it a lot more now. It's like a sense of desperation of this change of like, okay, no more. I can't do this anymore. And what a beautiful place to be. This, I can't do this anymore place. Because where do you go when you can't do this anymore? You let go. You look up. And you find what was there all along. You find God. And then you look around you and you find others. You find you within others. (laughs) And I have to tell you, I have great hope for humanity in this. Because of the extremity of the distress we will see equally the extremity of the revival. And you guys are doing it. You should be proud. I am. I'm proud to be a part of this movement. Proud to be a part of this time. I'm proud of the role that I play. And I promise to continue refining the way that my role is being played. That's what we're all called to do, play our part. And uh, thank you, COVID, for igniting all of that in us. So remember, it's no coincidence that you heard this show, that you found this in some way, that you are finding your sources of weakness or dis-ease Everything is happening for you. And you're listening. So I'll wrap this show up by saying thank you. Thank you for not only sticking with me for one of my longest shows, but um, thank you for reaching out. Thank you for doing the work because we really need it as a humanity. And I encourage you that no matter how hard it gets to keep moving forward, no matter what type of resistance comes your way, stay the path. Keep looking up. Discern right from wrong. Fight with the light. Come into love. Reach out for help. Reach out to help. No matter what resistance comes your way. Because I can assure you, the more you grow, the more resistance you will feel. This will both strengthen you fuel you, and it may sadden you. But when you get to curiosity and enlightenment, you recognize that it's only an illusion of pain when you have your expectations and blueprints attached to it. So surrender your own ideas, 
Set your sight and your vision on God's. Keep your vision far and long, but focus on the present moment and heal. Love you all. Please share this if it brought you value. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ignite the Spark Within. If this podcast brought you value or you think it would bring someone else value, please hit that share button. My mission is to reach and help as many people as I possibly can. And you just never know who could use that one good piece of information. And hey, if you have any topics, discussion questions, or ideas for future episodes, you can reach me directly at sarah at sparkflc.com and just write podcast in the subject line. And if you haven't already, please rate the podcast on your favorite podcast channel. This helps bring awareness to the show. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're alerted for all future episodes. Please go ahead and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in pursuing coaching for yourself, you can visit sparkflc.com for more information.